Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a somewhat quick video showing off some interesting things in Assassin's Creed Revelations. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Revelations was easily my favorite Assassin's Creed game. And I absolutely loved Ezio Auditore da Firenze. This is going to be split into two or more videos because as with the AC3 E3 demo, it turns out that there were more things to find within the game's files. First up, we've got this opening movie. I'm not sure if it's in the final, but it's really, really cool, and it seems to have been recycled from the beginning of the game, and it is cut off prematurely, it seems, unfortunately. But Ezio's awesome. Now that we've seen that, there's just one quick thing to note. You may have noticed that Ezio's monologuing about his being an acre and the letter content to, to Claudia is missing. Next up, we've got stage select debug menus. And that's pretty similar to the one I showed off in Assassin's Creed 1. And even more similar to the one in Assassin's Creed 3's E3 demo. However, this has one interesting detail, in that it's absolutely usable. Let's cover the individual menu options, and then we can cover what they do. We have AC, Final Episode, Gamescom, All Worlds, All Missions, All Cinematics, and Brightness, which surprisingly works. AC, Final Episode shows us all of the missions associated with the main story missions and side missions of the main game.
you may have noticed that Animus Island is absent, but we'll get to that later. It also shows us an interesting bit of text saying Assassin's Creed 2 final episode. This clears up a mystery that's been going on for a long time. Why is Revelation's codename Assassin's Creed final episode? The answer is that they were wanting to stick with four letters when abbreviated for codenames. At least, or so I would imagine. I mean, it makes sense. AC, AC2, ACBH, ACFE, ACGA, ACBF, ACRO, they're all four letters. AC2FE would not have the same ring to it, and I assume that this is the reason for the four-letter convention, but I don't know for sure. The next option is Gamescom. Gamescom shows us two options, Sequence 1, Mission 5, First Assassination, and Sequence 3, Mission 4, Masyaf, Temple Assault. Unfortunately, neither load well for the moment, but I'll see what I can do, and maybe that's the subject for a future video. For the moment, we'll be sticking to menus. Oddly, Masyaf doesn't load at all outside of the Gamescom demo screen. The next option is All Worlds. Again, like the E3 demo for AC3, this shows similar attributes. But unlike the E3 demo for AC3, this actually works. To a degree, at least. There are three basic types of stages. ACFE, EXO, and LGS. ACFE serves for towns such as Cappadocia, and other important places such as the Final Temple, which I'll cover by itself later. Next is All Missions, which serves to show a list of all missions. Normally, in an earlier build, this would show all missions, as well as some dev missions available. But as this is a later build, it really doesn't show these dev-exclusive missions. Much to my regret. There does appear to be one dev mission by the name of Fake DLC, but that doesn't really do anything very similarly to in Kingdom Hearts 2 if you use a room mod to go to the Dark Merchant. It doesn't do anything, you can't go anywhere, and it really just shows a bright light. The next menu option is All Cinematics. All Cinematics shows us the ability to view any cinematic in the game, formatted in sequence, mission, stage cutscene, and the name of it. Unfortunately, I'm really not able to do much with the game for the moment, as the medium that I'm using is basically crashing consistently. This game is split into four different executable types. MP, Penrose, ITCG, and Game Data. I'll say upfront, I don't know what ITCG stands for. The other three are MP, Penrose, and Game Data. But what are these? MP is multiplayer a concept that isn't used anymore for Assassin's Creed games, sadly. So that leaves us with Penrose and Game Data. What is Penrose and what is Game Data? Besides the obvious. Penrose, if you think back to my AC1 coverage just last week, it was mentioned one time. Penrose is a form of a triangle, which is also what the Abstergo logo is. The Abstergo logo is a Penrose triangle. The Penrose triangle, also known as the Penrose tri-bar, or the impossible tri-bar, is a triangular impossible object, an optical illusion consisting of an object which can be depicted in a perspective drawing which cannot exist as a solid ob- and you weren't really asking for that info. But I digress. Anyway, Penrose is in short the technical name for the Animus Island according to the files of the game, but it's not the real name. And finally, we come to the game data. The game data, if you think way back to my video on the AC3 E3 demo, we had some files. The scimitar.ini files. The game data files called forge files, and we also have the self or xex files. The self files on PS3 or xex files on the Xbox 360 are very fantastical files that are basically operating system specific version of exe files. There are release. Profile, Final, QC Final, Memtag Final, and a newly discovered, but irrelevant to ACFE, Scimitar underscore Test Kit. In short, this build only has Final, ITCG Final, Profile, and Release. Let's start off with Debug again, but this time in Penrose. 
This menu is very similar to the AC3 E3 demo debug menu in Chesapeake Bay. But Curry, why are you showing off stuff that we've already seen? I'm actually not. If you notice, this is actually a different title screen than I showed before. This menu is also different than the one that I showed off a few minutes ago. Like before, this menu has all worlds, all missions, all cinematics, and brightness. We're also missing the Gamescom menu option. But this is specific to Penrose, as I've taken to calling it. Penrose, as I inferred earlier, briefly at least, is an area of the game dedicated to Penrose Island sections of the game. This area of the build has a significant difference to the main game. The cutscene that plays as a demo cutscene for Penrose shows Ezio narrating just as the opening is for the retail game, and continues past the sudden cutoff that we saw before. There also seems to be unique title screen music placement, almost as if it was designed to be here. Given that it's its own title screen, which is decidedly different, I would guess that it was a design choice to make it independent of the main game. As I mentioned earlier, in Penrose we have all worlds, all missions, all cinematics, and brightness, which oddly still works. In all worlds we have PRCH11, PRDCH01, PRDCH02, PRDCH03, 04, and 05 underscore abstergo. In all missions, we have a host of test maps, or at least their names. Let's take a quick look in here. We've got Villa Past Mission, Desmond Chapters, Subject 16, Test Ven, E3 Checkpoints, AC2 Final Episode, Penrose Gym, Check, Rome, Prototypes Ford, Test Jockel, Matt Di Proto, Proto Assassin's Den, Sophia, Crowd Missions, VR Proto, Y Blend Shot Demo, Bomb Crafting, Calm Mission, and Hook Blade Proto. Of particular note is that AC2 Final Episode gives us a short list of missions from the Ezio side of the game, possibly from an earlier build of the game. Curiously, Hook Blade Proto is actually referenced in the multiplayer debug for Assassin's Creed 4. Unfortunately, all of these basically load perpetual loading screens, like Kingdom in Assassin's Creed 1. Cinematics allows us to choose between two cinematics. Unfortunately, neither work. With that, let's actually look at something. This map is obviously a test map. I mean, look at it. The way I'm moving around may look familiar to people who have played AC4 and Rogue. The reason why is because the Penrose format of this engine is likely what they used to bounce off of for the present parts of AC4 and Rogue. Real quick, let's take a look at the other side of this map. Oh, a hallway that goes nowhere. This map was likely used to investigate the plausibility of fall damage, the max height for fall damage, and how first-person gameplay would work with collision and other things. Let's take a quick look around. Oops, we fell in a hole. I guess we'll just have to reset. There's no way back up. While we're down here, I will not be rubbing Daxter's feet. But we can estimate that the max height from a drop that is survivable is 25 feet, assuming that each of these blocks is equivalent to a foot. How do I know this? Well, the max height is logically just outside of reach. This height we dropped at was 22 feet. I may have also used ghost mode to check. This pit, which would not be complete without a freeman crawling out of it, is 20 feet wide and 20 feet deep, as well as 60 feet long. Let's find out what's on the other side, finally. Ghost mode basically controls the same as in AC1. There's really nothing interesting here, except for the length of this map and the fact that these textures start distorting after a while. So we're gonna stick to ghost mode just to show how far this goes.
and this is where it ends. But wait, there's more! There's a small area outside of the standard areas of the map that was never really textured. Its general shape kind of reminds me of Hyrule Ruins and Smash Bros. Melee. Above this area is another area, but we can't really walk through it, so we're going to need to use Ghost Mode. We can see that this area narrows to the size of 2 feet by 2.5 feet. Within here, we can see two effigies fighting each other. And just to the side of that, there's one more final area. The thing about Assassin's Creed test maps is that they are really, really, really big. With that, I think that's a great stopping point. We still have two debug menus left to cover. I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and be sure to stay safe.